right? So what happens, now let's combine the two effects, the effect of the weight and the effect of the spring. So now on top of the theta, we gotta add this thing, plus L over two minus D mg, make this whole one thing, and then we have theta, right? So what's my general solution then? L over two minus D mg, and that's my omega. The period of oscillation is two pi square root of the inverse of this. I about the pivot point divided by k y minus d squared plus L over two minus d mg. Okay, so that's the general solution for the period of oscillation. So let's uh, give some numbers. Let's say the rod weighs <coughs> 10 kilogram. Let's say the distance D from here to here is a one meter. Let's say that the whole length is equal to four meters. Let's say the spring is a, K is a hundred Newton per meter. And then let's say the distance from here to here is equal to three meters. So that would be my y. So what would the period of oscillation be? So t would go from the 1 12th times the mass of the rod times the length of the rod squared. Right? You're doing 1 12th ml squared. Then you shift it from the center to over there, right? So if the center is over here, that's two meters, right? What's the shift amount from here to the pivot point? One meter, right? So you're always using the parallel axis theorem. 1 12 times the mass times the length squared plus the mass <coughs> times the distance. So since a four rod, this is two, this is one from here to here. So times one squared. Divide. Uh, kilogram times 9.8. So let's see what we get from here. Okay, so the answer comes out to be 1.36 seconds. So for small oscillations, it's going to go back every 1.36 seconds. Notice that the, the fact that we had a spring is going to make it go back and forth quicker. So the period, it's going to make the period smaller. If the spring wasn't there, this thing would not be there, this factor, and so this number would have been uh, bigger. But because you have a, a number here in the denominator, it's gonna make your number smaller than it would have been if the spring wasn't there, which makes sense, right? Okay, now what happens if I add another factor to this? Imagine if, imagine if I have this spring uh, uh, rod like this, Right, I pivoted here, again, one meter. And then I have the spring here, three meters. And let's say it still has 10 kilogram. <coughs> and now let's say um, a person comes here, uh, 20 kilogram, it's like a little kid. Let's say it's a diving board. Okay, let's make it a little bit bigger kid here, 30 kilogram. Okay, so if, the, if the, the kid is bobbing up and down with the platform, what's gonna be the period of oscillation? So imagine as if it's a diving board, a swimming pool diving board, and the pivot point is there. So we can make the pivot point anything that we want. The kid is gonna be standing, let's say the kid is standing right at the edge, okay? So he's gonna be right at four meters. So what do we add to this? What do we have to add to this? Well, the kid is gonna add their own torque to this, right? So essentially, what we're gonna have to do is just add a certain factor to the bottom, right? Two pi i about the pivot point 
plus over uh, k y minus d squared plus L over 2 minus D times mg plus what's the torque due to the kid, okay? The torque due to the kid is their distance from the pivot point. So let's say they're standing a distance x, right? So it'll be x minus D, right? <coughs> x minus D times the mass of the kid times g, right? However, here's a crucial thing that you might forget when you're doing this. The kid is also going to have its own moment of inertia about the pivot point. So not only do you have to worry about the moment of inertia of the rod about the pivot point, you have to do the, the kid's own moment of inertia about the pivot point. Now, what's the moment of inertia of the kid about the pivot point, okay? So the child's moment of inertia about this. So that's going to be 30 times the distance between them. So that's going to be uh, 4 minus 1, so that's 3 meters. So the child is 3 meters from the pivot point. So 30 times 3 squared divided by... 4 meters, so that would be 4 minus 1 times 30 times 9.8. So the effect of the kid is to add a certain number to the numerator by adding to the moment of inertia of the system and add a certain number to the denominator. Let's see what's going to end up happening here. Okay, so the answer comes out uh, 2.8968 seconds. So actually the period has been slowed down due to the mass and the moment of inertia of the child. So the child added a certain torque to the system, but also the child added a moment of inertia. So the, the fact that this, this one was a big number here, and even though this one was here, this had a greater effect than this. So it actually slowed down the system. So the new period of oscillation of the system is... Uh, 2.8968. So from this problem you can see how to approach any kind of situation like this. Whether it be a rod, wherever it's pivoted, if it has a spring attached to it, if there's a, another person on top of that, how to approach the whole situation of how do you make it look like a simple harmonic motion, how do you make it, how do you find a new uh, omega, and how do you find the period of motion. So once you know the technique, you can have another person here you could have another spring, and you could make it as complex as you want, and you could still do the problem just normal, you know. You could uh, still solve for the uh, problem. You would just have a different moment of inertia here. You would have to add the torque of each person over here, so it becomes a really doable problem once you know the general approach. Thank you very much. Bye.